Hey everybody and welcome to the fourth episode of Wargame Wednesdays from That's Your Garbage uh, Today we're going to be playing a game called AT43 which is actually not available anymore and it's uh, discontinued. Uh, the company that made AT43 went belly up and basically once that happened all the models went on sale and that's when I purchased every army in the game except for one which I'm now trying to purchase. So yeah, it's a game that's really close to my heart and uh, I really like the models, I like the rules. Uh, I kind of like the fluff when I can understand most of it. Yeah, the writing for the fluff is actually, like, <laughs> terrible. Yeah, some of that stuff is, like, fucking stranger than fiction. Anyway, um, <laughs> so, yeah, Lawrence is going to explain a little bit about the rules, and then we're going to start turn one. Yeah, I'll talk a little bit about the rules. First thing you see, that uh, this game, unlike uh, some of the other games we play, actually has comes with built-in, like, terrain maps. And this particular terrain map, if you look a little more closely, you'll see that there are walls designed. This is kind of like an urban terrain map, and so there's a lot of areas where you can't go. In addition to all of that, we've got uh, a bunch of terrain placed here. These larger crates uh, block line of sight for troops completely so they can hide behind them. Can't get shot, but can't shoot out either. And for the uh, bigger walkers, some of the walkers can shoot over them and get cover saves from being behind them, while others can't shoot from out behind them at all. And uh, same thing goes for uh, those double stacked uh, tank traps where uh, walkers can sometimes shoot over them and sometimes can't but can't go through them. Walkers can neither walk over the big crates nor those specific pieces of terrain. On the other hand, the smaller, the lower pieces of terrain there, these can be used to give uh, uh, cover to infantry and infantry can fire from out from behind them and the uh, walkers can just walk right over them. Now, if you look over here on uh, this side of the table, you see that we've got our models piled up here. And so, G, today we'll be playing one of the factions in this game called the UNA. And uh, he's got the models over there. There's a walker. It's a, called a fire toad. And um, nice a I will be playing uh, the red block because I always end up playing the Russians in any faction where there's a faction that approximates the Russians. It's just the rule. And so uh, there's some of the uh, smaller, like, armored suit dudes, which are um, tack arms in uh, the UNA and Colossus in uh, Red Block. And there's uh, Nekovalny, which is the uh, Type 1 walker that I'm using. And there's some uh, troops. So this game system is a little bit different than, um, than some of the others that we've played. It uses kind of a universal resolution table. So there's stat cards for each unit. And each of those stat cards has different types of stats on them that determine how far the unit can move, how, how accurate its shooting are, is, how accurate uh, or and how much damage its close combat attacks do, and also how much damage the individual guns do. Uh, what's unique with this system is that there's one table that's used to resolve everything called the Universal Table of Resolution. And um, so basically it works where any, whenever you have to compare two stats to resolve something, you basically take the uh, attacking stat, subtract the defending stat, and the difference between the two, a positive or negative number, tells you what you have to roll on dice to get the outcome. So this covers like whether you hit, whether you wound, whether you get saves from cover, whether you live or die as a result of those wounds. So it's pretty much kind of a universal table. Uh, another thing that's unique with AT43 is that the uh, measurement uh, system, because you have this relative comparing of stats to determine what you hit on, it's, um, there really aren't per se fixed ranges within which the weapons have a certain to hit or to miss. Instead, the weapons, each weapon is given a range, and you uh, basically subtract uh, the range of the weapon from the range to the target using the numbers on the special Rackham tape measures and that tells you what you need to hit. So until you get to a high enough number where you can no longer roll to hit, uh, you can still hit anywhere within that band and it, you know, the closer you are the better your guns get so it's not like you hit on this number. It's or not more. like 40k or Firestorm Armada. Well, actually, it's close to what Firestorm Armada is. Like. Well, sort of. Firestorm, Similar. Yeah, well, Fire, well, Firestorm Armada gives you more dice the closer you get. It doesn't make what you have to roll to hit get easier. That's true, okay. So right? it's not So it's kind of a similar. unique mechanic that's kind of um, within AT43. It's definitely one of my favorite um, games. Yeah, th this game is uh, actually really awesome. It's kind of unfortunate that it went out of business because this one really had the potential to present the challenge to the plastic cocaine habit uh, represented by Warhammer 40k. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's still a fun game, and uh, you can get all the stuff used for pretty easily these days. eBay. And, yeah, eBay is your friend for this game. And so we're going to uh, start deploying our forces for uh, the first turn, and uh, we'll come, we're playing uh, the first mission, I think, this game, Seek and Destroy. Yeah. Where we basically just got to kill each other. Game lasts six turns, and whoever has the most victory points after six turns wins. Board 
Here we are at the uh, conclusion of the first turn of our game of AT43, and uh, we have a special guest this week. Uh, Jay decided to show up to watch us play this game because he's apparently never seen us play a war game before, or seen anyone play a war game, actually. Except for the people at GW, but they're not people. Well, yeah, they don't, and that's not a war game. Yeah, my experience with war games is I walked into a games workshop and then wanted to leave really quickly because I got surrounded by 12 people. All I could say is like I knew what it was like to be like a woman caught in an elevator with like twelve guys when I walked into a games workshop. Yeah, so. they just they smell. Well, they attempted to do a similar thing in terms of their pricing structure. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so anyway, we're at the conclusion of turn one. All that out. No, you're not. That was the best thing I've said on this website in weeks. You can see here on G's side of the board, he's brought in his. Uh, various units as far as they can go. They can go, most of the foot units can go 14 centimeters and then they get an extra six because it's uh, they're running and not shooting. Because and unlike 40k, your run speed is not a random interval. You and because as you can see from the board set up here, um, you, from the table setup, you can see that because of all the walls, it's not really possible for either side to shoot at each other just yet. So right now is just running to get into position for later rather than worrying about anything else at the moment. So and on the other side, uh, I've moved my red block troops uh, up as far forward as I could to get them closer to the center of the thing. And there's my Nakovalny, which moved up uh, as fast as it could. It can run faster than the other crap. And then the back around there, as I shake the camera like a complete jackass, you can see uh, my Colossi, which have come in from the edge there. So at this point, taking an overall perspective on the board, you can see that both sides are a long way away from being able to shoot at each other in the center of the board because there's so much cover. Luckily, we both brought really good long range lists that we're going to end up fighting in like range zero in about two seconds. Yeah, this is going to actually turn into a complete bloodbath once we get into the center. So uh, we'll be back after uh, we'll the conclusion back. of turn we'll two. We'll start again when we get to the center. There's... Yeah, we'll start again when, when we get to somewhere. Happens. Yeah, we, yeah, when we can actually like shoot at each other, and I can start fit rolling horribly at dice. So here we are at the end of turn two. As we predicted, uh, not much really got into firing positions. Uh, G's army moved up further towards the center. Uh, okay. So did my army. I managed to get my uh, Nakovalny, which is that type 1 walker you see there, into position to fire barely at his fire toad, which you see over there. But I didn't manage to do anything to it, so whatever. And uh, yeah, other than that, uh, not really much happened. Next and turn will be better. next turn will be better because we'll actually get into position to actually maybe shoot at each other. It'll be easier for you because you play red block. I was like. He's gonna have a lot of short range guns, so I won't be a huge dick and be like, I'm gonna shoot you from across the board and laugh at your corpses. <laughs> and then that just didn't pan out. Yeah, it just, you know, it didn't. You took a long range red block list. Alright, so this is the end of turn three. Um, Lorenzo is dice failing. I don't even know how to not say that without saying it. He just doesn't do well in dice on dice situations. <laughs> dice um, on dice. Yeah. You know, it's that kind of a game. Um, he shot it, my Tacons and Nakavani woofed it. His both Dragon Knot squads. Those Tac Arms. Huh? Oh, no, I was just pointing out which Tac Arms there that I shot at. Oh, he shot these guys with Nakavani? Yeah. Nothing. And then I shot at. The Dragon Knot shot at these Steel Troopers, and I didn't actually lose one, and I literally did think I was going to. Yep, because I woofed all my dice. Basically, Morningstar are dumb. <laughs> And if you look at my Colossi over there, you'll notice I've already lost one, which is kind of not good. Yeah, I lost He lost yeah. one, which was actually... And not having played this game in quite a while and not really having uh, understood this map that well because of the way I play Strain. And I'm probably going to lose. But it's okay. Live and learn. The next game is going to be on an open field <laughs> with one crate in the middle. No, no. We, I, li I like the open fields because you're using the crates and like yeah, yeah. tank traps as terrain. This thing is like really... No, this is just, I this didn't is really... Funny. Yeah, I didn't like think about it w well, as well I, I, as I, I don't should think have. It's over yet? I think you could still pull it. Yeah, out. I mean, whatever. It's gonna be now. It's gonna be harder. For yeah, me. now it's gonna be like Fuck. potentially difficult. The, the the one thing that I do want want to point out is, we also decided when we wrote the list for this game that we weren't gonna take any type two walkers because in this kind of a scenario, they don't actually fit through the entry entryways. You wanna just get? Are you getting? Yeah. This? Okay. A type two like a, a defender snake or a hetman wouldn't be able to fit through these entrances. 
So they'd basically be relegated to the sitting in the back edge and hoping somebody walked in front of them. Yeah, which is kind of useless. But it also guarantees that I'm going to lose because every game I've ever played, <laughs> every game I've ever played of, uh, of this game where I've been able to take a type to Walker, the Hetman has basically won me the game. That thing is like by far the it's most the jacked type to Walker in the game. It is grotesquely overpowered. It's, I don't know. I think it's, I think it's a good foil to the fact that some of your AFBs are not that good. Yeah. And that and the hetman's Whereas just like, like godly amazing. All the UNA FFVs, except for like the light prince, but who takes something called a light prince ever? Is, is yeah, it just shit. sounds very. It's, yeah. light, it's called the light prince. I yeah, I'd, like, I'd much rather be the dark prince. Like, so. <laughs> all right, so this is the end of turn four. Now, for the record, I just want to point something out. This is going to take a little bit of time, but bear with me. These guys are in cover and in Overwatch. These guys aren't in cover, but they can't get shot by anybody. These guys are in cover and in Overwatch. Cover, Overwatch. Can't get shot by anybody. Way out of the way of any bullets, ever. These guys are in cover, can't get shot by anybody. Same goes for these guys here, the Fire Toad and the Steel Trooper. And these guys are in cover and in Overwatch. Now, because me and Lorenzo were, like, awesome, and we don't believe in, like, suicidal ca causes, like, in the norm. Technically, this game is just gonna stay in this, like, array of dudes. We're not gonna move anybody until he moves first. Basically, none of us are gonna go first normally. Because, I mean, we're not stupid. Right. So, like, this, so game, this game's over. Yeah, what this we've managed <laughs> to prove here is that the indoor terrain map is the worst map in AT43. If you use crates. You can't use crates. Under any circumstances no. whatsoever. Way we, too much cover. We've, yeah, we've basically just beaten ourselves into a stalemate and now... So, in the interest of having a video that has a conclusion that doesn't result in us just going good game and going for pizza, I'm just gonna run at him. Because, well, unless he goes first, then he might run at me. But yeah. the point is... Because I probably will, because like... Now, all it. bets are off. It's a tie, and we're just going to play for shits because we love this game. Mm -hmm. But really, tactically, this game yeah. would just go on forever. Like you, you, can't use, you can't use this map for this type of game. It and just if, doesn't work. And if you do, you shouldn't really use crates. At because, all. Because they, they just block line of sight and make shooting retarded. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, no crates. Next time, we're going to play on an outdoor map, and it's going to be a real game. This is, this is just going to be us being stupid. Okay, so this is the end of turn five, and for those of you watching at home, not very much has changed on the board. That's because me and Lorenzo spent the entire turn shooting every gun we had at each other, no matter how stupid the shots were, and did like, what? You killed three attack arms with like your whole army, and I did nothing. And that was it. That was basically turn five in a nutshell. Pretty much, those are the casualties of the entire turn. Yeah. So and there's only one turn left in this mission, so we're going to be calculating victory points after the next turn, after having spent the entire t game doing absolutely nothing. Yeah. So, um, we apologize for this being the singular most boring episode of War Game Wednesday in the history of the goddamn universe. This will never happen again, yeah. I promise. And we will not make this mistake again. We will do much better next time. We promise. Like, there's going to be dancers and shit next time. Yeah, sorry. exactly. I mean, and God. Soul's going to dance. <laughs> Okay, so this is the end of turn six. Uh, as you can see, pretty much nothing really happened. Um, Lord did manage to kill a squad of attack arms. I managed to not do very much damage, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, so we're never gonna play a game like this again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'd like to, I, I, once again, apologize for what a travesty this turned into. Uh, we will definitely make sure the next time uh, we play AT43, which I think will be next week, no, we well, will... Well, it depends on what depending. from our Firestorm Armada order. Yeah, maybe. We might play Firestorm Armada next week, too. Oh, it, depends. it depends what comes in. Yeah, but it's in any case, um, uh, at the end of turn six, uh, you can see that we barely got anywhere and didn't really get to engage each other that much. We didn't even get into close combat at all. Yeah, I know. Okay. I would have needed one more turn to get into close combat, yeah. but... You know, um, but the point here is, uh, I, the way victory points are calculated for the seek and destroy scenario, you get two v victory points for killing a uh, infantry unit, so I killed one, he didn't kill off any of mine completely, and I, you get one point for each officer you kill of the enemy's army, so, and I killed one of his officers because he had one in the attack arm unit I killed, so I got three victory points and he got none, so technically it makes me uh, having uh, come out ahead in this game, nobody's a winner. Yeah, really. It just, I don't know. Everybody loses. Everybody lost.
Yeah. We are all lesser for having partaken in this game. Just under my face. Oh, and for any of you that actually have been watching our videos with Wargame Wednesday, uh, now that I've got this new uh, tripod and camera set up, I'd like to know what you guys think of the um, overhead three quarters angle I'm using here. I'm trying to give you guys a view that lets you get an overall sense of the relative position of the units of both sides of the board, so that you can get some sort of understanding of like what we're actually trying to achieve with where our units are. So uh, if you find this useful or you think it's terrible and I should like put the camera like, I don't know, say... Shaky cam, shaky cam. Like here. Like our first video? Yeah, like our first video. Let me know in the comments. I will be playing uh, the red block because I always end up playing the Russians in any faction where there's a faction that approximates the Russians. It's just the rule. And so uh, there's some of the uh, smaller, like, armored suit dudes, which are um, tack arms in uh, the UNA and Colossus in uh, red block and there's a uh, Nakovalny which is the uh, type 1 walker that I'm using and there's some uh, troops so this game system is a little bit different than um, than some of the others that we've played it uses a terrain map and so there's a lot of areas where you can't go in addition to all of that we've got uh, a bunch of terrain placed here these larger crates uh, block line of sight for troops completely so they can hide behind them can't get shot But can't shoot out either and for the uh, bigger walkers some of the walkers can shoot over them and get cover saves from being behind them While others can't shoot from out behind them at all and uh, same thing goes for uh, those double stacked uh, tank traps Where uh, walkers can sometimes shoot over them and sometimes can't but can't go through them walkers can either walk over the big crates nor those specific pieces of terrain. On the other hand, the smaller, the lower pieces of terrain there, these can be used to give uh, uh, cover to infantry, and infantry can fire from out from behind them, and the uh, walkers can just walk right over them. Now, if you look over here on uh, this side of the table, you see that we've got our models piled up here. And so, G, today we'll be playing one of the factions in this game called the UNA. And uh, he's got the models over there. There's a walker, it's a, called a fire toad. And so um, nice for a I really like the models, I like the rules, uh, I kind of like the fluff when I can understand most of it. Yeah, the writing for the fluff is actually <laughs> like terrible. Yeah, some of that stuff is like fucking stranger than fiction. Anyway, um, <laughs> so yeah, I'm just going to explain a little bit about the rules and then we're going to start turn one. Yeah, I'll talk a little bit about the rules. First thing you see that uh, this game, unlike uh, some of the other games we play, actually has comes with built in like terrain maps. And this particular terrain map, if you look a little more closely, you'll see that there are walls designed. This is kind of like an urban... Hey everybody, and welcome to the fourth episode of Wargame Wednesdays from That's Your Garbage uh, Today we're going to be playing a game called AT43, which is actually not available anymore, and it's uh, discontinued. Uh, the company that made AT43 went belly up, and... Basically, once that happened, all the models went on sale, and that's when I purchased every army in the game, except for one, which I'm now trying to purchase. So, yeah, it's a game that's really close to my heart. And I